Okay, welcome to our next lesson. Let's move on. Start off by watching the video. So you might want to uh, pause the, uh, the video and have a go at this one and listen to this guy talk a little bit more about uh, algebra. Once you've watched that video, there's another one where we can um, watch this guy talk a bit more about uh, other aspects of how algebra is used and so on. And uh, you can then continue with this video after you finish it. Okay, this lesson we're talking about inequalities. All right, so we're up to that point there on our work rate right calendar. Week three, lesson one, linear in inequalities. So today we're going to talk about solving inequalities. We do this because some math problems, the answers are not equal, they're not equations, they're what we call inequalities. And there's assumptions that we have over there. Inequalities help us show this and help us sort of solve these problems that aren't quite so clear cut as normal equations in algebra. All right, so inequalities. An equation is a statement of equality and it has this equal sign in here. All right. Because it's got that equal sign, you know that x equals 17. That's exactly what x is. A linear inequality, though, is a little bit different. A linear inequality is a statement such as this one here. And we say that as x is greater than or equal to 17. If I write that out rather than typing it, it would be x is greater than or equal to 17. And we show that on the right hand in the little uh, graph we've got there. You can see that we've got a solid dot there, and then the line continues off that way. So we know that x is any number from 17 onwards. Now that's different to um, this scenario down here. x is greater than, x is less than 2. Sorry, I should have done that similar way around. It should be that way. x is less than 2. Now that means that x is not 2, but it is anything less than 2. Okay? And we show that by the circle on the number line there. So x can't actually be 2, but it can be anything less than 2. Okay, so we've got those symbols where just the line like that means less than or greater than, but when we have the extra little equals looking thing on there, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Right, another way to think about it is here's our greater than, less than sign in the middle here. This is like the smaller side of the uh, of the symbol. This is the larger side. So the bigger number goes on this side, the smaller number goes on this side. So if we say this is an x and this is a 10, x is on the smaller side, so x must be smaller than 10. You may, uh, in previous years, have heard about the, uh, the idea of a crocodile or something eating whatever's the biggest, and this is like a, a set of jaws. You can know, use his teeth, and uh, he's uh, eating the uh, bigger number. All right, so let's have a look. Represent the values of x on the number line for each of the following. So we've got x is less than or equal to 5, x is greater than or equal to 2, and x is between 3 and 7. All right, x is this last one here is a little more complex. I'll come back to him. I'll just do one number line. Here it is here. Not drawn very, very neatly. I'll just start with zero in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, obviously, if you're doing this in your book, you do it neatly and you draw it with the ruler and so on. But since I'm doing it on the screen here, I don't have that luxury. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. It's important to note that the distance between each of these numbers should be the same physical distance on your page. Okay, so part A, x is less than or equal to 5. So we represent that as a solid circle and then a line going down. And you can keep doing that as far as you feel comfortable. So that's A. Right. In B, x is greater than negative 2. So it's not negative 2, 
but it's greater than negative 2. And we represent that with the green line there. Let's be. Anyway, another colour. So the last one x is greater than 3 or less than or equal to 7. So we show that by being it's going to be greater than 3, but it's going to be less than or equal to 7. So we color that one in. And we connect the two. Notice in A and B, I have an arrow on the end because it just continues forever and ever in that direction. But in C, it's between those two points. Okay. And there's a, a more formal way of doing it. Looks a little bit nicer. Okay. Solve each for x in each of the following equations. So this is going to be solving equations like we did in the last lesson, but the only difference is we have this little um, inequality symbol in the middle here. All right, we'll see how that works. Let's have a look. All right. Okay. <clears throat> First thing we do is we write down the, uh, the equation like we've done there. X plus 3 is greater than or equal to 12. We solve it. How do we get rid of our plus 3? We would subtract 3. We would subtract 3 from both sides. When I subtract 3 from the left hand side there, 3 minus 3 is nothing, and I end up with my x. 12 minus 3 is 9. So x is greater than or equal to 9 is my answer. Same thing with the other one. 4x minus 3 is less than 7. It's just like our equations. We get rid of that one first, the constant. Then we deal with the coefficient, the 4 on the x there. Just like I spoke about in the last video. So again, the first thing I'm going to do down the bottom here, I'm going to get rid of the minus 3. So we sometimes say we're going to move it to the other side. It's like I go plus 3 to the left, plus 3 to the right. On the left hand side, I'm left with my 4x. On the right hand side, I've got negative 7 plus 3, which is the negative 4. Now I want to get rid of the 4 in front of the x, the coefficient. So it's a 4 times x, the opposite of that is divide by 4, so I'm going to divide this side by 4, and negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. x is less than negative 1. It's that simple. It's exactly what we were doing last time, just the symbol and the word are different. Now, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you reverse the inequality. I'll show you an example of that in a minute. So if you've got a symbol that's that way, you turn it around and give, give the negative numbers involved in the multiplication or division. How's that look? Let's have a look at this one. Negative 4x is less than or equal to 20. Okay, so to get rid of or to deal with this, this negative 4, so I get x on its own, what I'm going to do is divide by negative 4. Right? I'm dividing by a negative number, divide by negative 4. This symbol here must switch around. And you can see it's changed around. So I've got 20 divided by negative 4 is my negative 5. And I've changed the symbol. X is now greater than or equal to negative 5. Okay? That's all we was to. Uh, same with this last one. This here's my constant, so I'll deal with him first, and then I'm going to deal with this negative 2 second. So to get rid of the, uh, the 9, the constant, it's a positive 9, so that's a, a positive 9. So the opposite of that is to subtract 9. So I'll subtract 9 from there. 5 minus 9 is my negative 4. Okay. So the next one basically becomes negative 2x. I'm going to divide it by negative 2. Change the symbol around. It's opposite direction to what it was just above. And negative 4 divided by negative 2. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is 2. X is less than or equal to 2. Positive 2. All right. Have a go at uh, exercise 4.5. Try those exercises in the grey column in the middle there. And talk to your teacher if you have any dramas. Thanks for coming.